So Eli got a fancy new leash that we uh, won through an auction um, from I want to show it to you it's a it's a collar leash combination and uh, it has a quick release for the collar if I want that um, it's also a martingale so that um, I don't have to have his collar on and I have to worry about him slipping through his collar um, and it has his name on it which is awesome I love it um, so but anyway I wanted to show you guys um, teaching our dogs to get their leash put on and taken off is a really valuable skill definitely something that I encourage all of my students to do um, so I just want to show you a little bit of the mechanics of how I do it um, first off when I'm when I'm opening up the martingale I like to hold all of the the hardware into my hand and I, I tuck it all into um, the palm of my hand and then I use my thumb uh, and a little bit of my pinky to open it up um, now when I'm doing this I want to make sure that I'm not having him come into my knee or coming into my leg um, or into my hand so I'm trying to think how people do this oh they go like that um, and then the dog is coming into the arm of the person um, and dogs don't like to come underneath usually um, so if you hold it out here and then we're gonna pull his nose through towards my hand as opposed to um, away from my hand so all right let me let me bring him over Here, my bud. <laughs> super job so he's on uh, my um, incorrect side for my hand position currently so as I stand now it would be much it's more cumbersome for me to ask him to come through this way and although he can do it it's not the easiest way for me so now he is coming from the side that I want so I've got my hand holding him to begin with and then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna move this hand right in between the uh, in the center of the martingale and then slowly just pull him through and he pulls on the collar as opposed to me um, pushing it back on him let me change hands let's change hands here bud <laughs> so oh all right sit 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 good so to begin with opening it all the way up i'm gonna put sit sit <laughs> good boy i'm gonna sit wait Hold on, hold on. I'm gonna put my cookie right through the center. I'm gonna put it at or be just below his nose level. <laughs> you can see he already wants to do it. Come here, bud. Sit, go on. So I'm gonna put my cookie at or below. Now, if he struggles, I'll put my hand all the way through and then slowly pull my hand forward. Notice that I'm not moving the collar part. He's actually coming into, he's coming into the collar. So I'm just going to set him away from me. I can send him on and get it. And then I can get ready. Cookie's in the middle. Yes, he comes in and gets rewarded. And notice when, when I'm taking it off of him, he's kind of uh, pulling his head out um, like he's uncomfortable. So I just want to pay attention to that because there could come a point when taking the collar off actually becomes more um, a, stressful for them than I want and so I want to pay attention when he's in and now when I go to take it off um, is he struggling to get it off or is he comfortable getting it off so I just want to pay attention to that and if he started to become uncomfortable with it then I would utilize my buckle snap here and unsnap him um, for the release all right so buckling it back up I hold all the hardware to hold the martingale open as wide as it goes. And this particular one, this has a sliding um, stop here. And so I can actually allow the martingale to open up quite wide, almost Great Dane size. Um, and, you know, to, to for beginning, um, or um, I prefer to have slightly closed because he's well trained for this. And then it's less of a, of a loop. Bud, bud, eat, good, get dressed. And then once he's doing it nicely and um, easily, and he's willingly coming into um, the collar, then I would start to label it. So I don't label it in the very beginning. I wait for them to understand and, and want to do the behavior before I label it. Get dressed, yes, good boy, super, excellent. 
get dressed super. The other thing is if he starts to struggle with that going um, back over his head, then I would open this up just a little bit to give him a little bit more room to go in and out of it um, without stress. Yeah, good boy, super. All right, so here's part two of um, when we're taking the leash off either for practice or for a trial, we want to teach them how to get off leash, um, what is what we want for our behavior once they are off leash, and every dog differs in what they need when coming off leash. And so some dogs need to shake themselves off, some dogs need to look around, some dogs need to um, just release a little bit of stress once that leash comes up. So you want to learn your dog's behavior and what they need once the leash comes up and in practice i practice taking the leash off and I, what i want from him i practice it a whole bunch of different ways so sometimes he's standing and i just take it off and he can do whatever he wants upon taking it off now he sat just before i took it off so let me put it back on i don't want him to think that he's in a stay so just taking it off and what does he do if he stays with me then I'm going to reward it. So how did I teach that? This is how I taught it. I had a cookie. I had a cookie out and ready. And sometimes he'd be in a sit, sometimes he'd be in a stand. Um, I never worked this in a down, or at least I haven't yet, um, but a sit or a down. And then he knows that I have cookies. And my goal here is that when the leash comes off, his nose stays um, facing me. So I have a cookie, I let him know that paying attention right out of the gate is what I like. So I'm feeding him uh, multiple of his cookies. Then I reach down and I give him a cookie as I reach down. So I'm rewarding him in the beginning for that hand reach over his head towards his, his collar. And I'll do that in a bunch of different positions. So taking him and rewarding him for my hand coming in and where do I want his head when I go and grab his collar. So the collar here equals look forward towards this cookie because a cookie will be coming. So it doesn't matter what position I take is look forward towards me and a cookie will come. Yes, <laughs> and I do practice that with both hands, although I am better um, with my right hand. One more cookie. Excellent. Okay. Good boy, Zipa. All right, so again, I'm bringing him back into my position. Um, now I can either hold on to this, but at this point, unless I'm going to throw the leash away and these early stages, I honestly don't care if I just drop the, cook, the, the leash on the floor because I'm not actually working within a course. I'm not working within his start line. All I'm focusing right now is that when I'm uh, about to take the leash off is try and be in some focus with me. So again, the first thing I do is this behavior right here, this focus up at me is highly reinforcing and I will reinforce you. Now notice that the way that I feed him is I'm not blocking his view towards me and I'm not covering his nose, okay? So I don't want to um, force him to push backwards. I want him to pull forward towards me and want to be with me and letting him draw the cookies out of me rather than me pushing the cookies into him. Now, if I have a biter, a little bit different story, but he doesn't bite hard uh, down hard in this exercise. And so I'm rewarding him just for um, focusing forward. So I can drop my leash on the ground and he stays fo focused. Then the hand goes towards his collar. He gets rewarded again. And now we move on to part, what is it? Part three, <laughs> part four, <laughs> I don't know. Anyway, then we move on to the next part of this exercise. So the next part is actually taking the leash off and his behavior, once I take the leash off, I want to reward him for sticking with me. I don't care if he stands up. I don't care if he um, lies down. I don't care if he shakes. As long as he doesn't take off, I'm going to grab the, the little tiny bit of behavior that I like um, and tell him exactly what I want right out of the gate. So again, hand goes down. I take the leash off and he immediately gets a cookie. 
All right, so this is very, very early stages of leash training is when I take that leash off, what does he do? So hand goes down, pull it off, immediately in with the cookies. Immediately, good boy. Okay, super. <laughs> and again, I will do this in all different types of locations. So hand goes down to the collar, he gets rewarded. Hand comes, at leash comes off, he immediately gets rewarded in all different types of positions. Okay, and also, interest in all different types of positions for him. So he's standing, leash comes off, I immediately reward him. Now, if he's a, if he's a dog that has a history of looking away, then I will keep a cookie here, and as the leash comes over his head, there'll be another cookie ready to receive him. So my hand stays here, and he's getting fed, the leash goes over his head and immediately I'm rewarding him again. Okay, and then the exercise ends. I'm not going on to um, practice a course. I'm not doing any exercises outside of that. I'm just working this behavior of coming on and off the leash and him getting used to that. All right, so where do we go from here? A couple of different directions we could go. One, teaching them that this leash getting thrown away equals pay attention to me. So when I throw a leash away, when I take my leash and I throw it to behind me, he gets rewarded. If I throw, if I just drop it down, it gets, he gets rewarded. Super. If I take the leash and throw it behind him, which is harder, yes, good boy, he gets rewarded. Now, if he had gone for the leash, if he had um, taken off with the leash or with a toy or whatever, not a big deal. I'm just going to bring him back and maybe try it a different direction. Make it go um, in a, a closer direction or maybe just off to the side of him while also rewarding him. So that there's not a question of will you get rewarded for this moving? Yes, there will be a reward coming. Okay. <laughs> and get back dressed. So see how he moved towards me when I said that? Um, so that's my question. Do you want to get dressed? Or let's get dressed is usually more what I say. Um, since we're practicing this, he definitely wants to. Um, but it's let's get dressed or get dressed, either way. Um, all right, so we've worked through multiple um, sections of, of the leash. One is how to get them on leash. So you want to make just getting on leash rewardable and especially if you've done a sequence or you're in practice the leash should equal going to a jackpot so either out um, of the arena or at the side of the arena or at your car there should always be a connection once the leash goes on we're not done with our training we're actually coming to the end of our training which is going to equal a jackpot for you along with a cool down a drink of water a chance to potty is this stressing? So he just showed a sign of stress by yawning. Um, I just want to pay attention to that, that me talking um, for a duration without much attention towards him is difficult for him. I just want to acknowledge that. It doesn't necessarily mean that I'll do anything different at this point because he's still with me, but I also want to acknowledge, thanks for hanging with me, bud, um, and, and working with me. All right, so going back to the leash actually being off. So once the leash is off, and I can reward him, then I want to work on tiny little steps. Can you stay with me in attention and move in my direction? And all I want to do is in the very beginning is can you move two steps and stay with me? Can you move um, and notice that I am backing up because that is the easiest for dogs to do rather than moving with us in the direction um, in the same direction as us this is harder for them than backing into us okay yeah you're very clever so once i see that i've got him then can we move side to side and you stay with me and if you can i'm going to reward them yes super excellent and then i may start working on him coming into position once he's off leash so i'm going to put him back on leash Get dressed. Super. 
And now I'm going to ask him to come into position. And I can do this two ways. One, I can do it on leash or I can move to it off leash and see if he can come into position. When he's off leash, it's going to be harder. So if he's struggling, then work on your on leash behavior before you work on your off leash behavior. Set up. Set up. Yeah, super. Super. Oh, <laughs> you're falling over. Yeah. Set up. Set up. Excellent. Good. Super. Excellent. Good boy. Super. Super. So we've only done a handful of zips on leash, which is more cumbersome for me. So zip is something that I prefer to do off leash, um, but there are many trainers that do zip on leash. Teaching them how to do zip with the leash on is a skill all in itself, so you want to include it in your training. Zip. Zip. Yes. Super. So how do you physically handle the leash? when it's wrapped around your leg. How do you deal with that? How do you get the leash off? Do you take the leash through your legs? Do you uh, leave the leash behind you here and then take their collar off here and drop it? Is that going to catch onto your foot when you do that? Is it going to catch onto your dogs? Um, no, whether or not. So right now he just sat on the left part of the leash right here. What happens when I pick it up? Oh, he wasn't sitting on it. But what happens when I pick it up and move it past him and he can feel that. So what happens to him? Does he move out of position? Does he like it? Does it bother him to have the leash moving around him? And if it does, then I either need to be aware of that and not do it in, in a training scenario or train for it, right? Like teach him that the leash coming over him is not a big deal, but he really could care less. And so if I had a dog, my daughter's dog, if I did this to my daughter's dog, she'd probably pull all the way out of my legs and say, please don't ever do that again. So it's not something that I would do to her um, or I, that I would encourage my daughter to do to her in a trial scenario. So you have to know your dog and what they like. Oh, so he didn't like that. Did you see that? So I went to, and it could be that he was going for the cookies, but it also could be that I had, I went underneath him and he's not used to that. So if the leash is underneath him, is he going to bother with it? Yes, good boy. Super, super job. Excellent, can I get him dressed like this? Get dressed. Oh, a charter, get chest. <laughs> yeah, so he's, he shows me it's difficult. We've never done that before. Whoops, back it up. Get chest. Yes, super job. Super job. Is that everything with the leash? There's probably more, huh? Here's another thing. Yeah, yeah, can you tug? <laughs> yes, yes, can you tug with the leash on? And is this something that you want? <laughs> is this something that you want in your training repertoire. Um, will your dog go for the leash while you're training? Will your dog go for the leash while you're um, on course? And if they will, then you need to train with this distraction in their um, training plan rather than just expecting it. Yeah. Out. Super. Super job. But what if you don't have a martingale collar and just have a regular traditional leash? This is what I do. I take my handle, my handle, put my buckle through, and that makes my 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 noose. Um, so now the buckle is down there, the noose is up here. Um, I make it to my dog's um, size. So small dogs will be smaller, big dogs will be bigger, and same exact thing, right? Get dressed, good boy, and then it tightens up around them and at that point then I can take this end of the leash and buckle it to my dog. So again, it's opening it up, getting it open, holding where the two meet. Get dressed. Good boy. Super. 